the 1970 and a half Baldwin Motion Camaro from AMT Ertl, coming up next on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Hello once again Model Kit fans, are you ready for another amazing model kit where today we're going to be looking at AMT Ertl's 1970 and a half Baldwin Motion Camaro. Now this cool car is of course one of the awesome ones that AMT made and what we'd want to do now is go down and take a look and see what's inside. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1970 and a half with this Baldwin Motion Camaro. So in case you're wondering, this whole 1970 and a half basically means that this car would have come out in September of 1969, but there might have been some production delays or something else. So instead of it coming out in September, they released these cars in April of the following year. So that's the half because it comes out six months after the original release date. So here we have our 70 and a half Camaro. And this one uh, is from AMT, I think under the round two banner. And as you can see off the side here, we get some nice little build up on it, as well as the front three quarter view. Our side here, or sorry, our end. And then here on this side, it says that this kit came out in 2003 under the RC brands, RC2, pardon me, brand label, just prior to round two, which is the current owner of AMT. Officially licensed by GM, there's those pictures of it again, side view, engine view, and interior. Skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up, requires glue and a paintbrush. And actually is quite a nice little kit. So what we'll do is we'll just spin this around here. Now this is our first video of our 1970s series. So I hope you guys will like the next 100 million videos that are coming up on all the other cars. So removing the lid here to see what we've got. Here we have the instruction sheet, and it says that I bought this at Walmart December 26, 2003, so I've had this since new, in, in a three-pack for $14.95. Remember these? They had three cars in there and possibly uh, some glue and paint. And man, 14 bucks divided by three back in 2003. I used to buy quite a bit of these for the store. It was actually cheaper than my wholesalers. So I'll just move that out of the way. I do believe, actually... No, oh, maybe not. I thought there was the decal sheet stuff in there. Okay, everything's still in bags from 2003. So we're going to open it up in this video. There's our tires and our taillights. Here we have the car body, still in the bag. Mint in package. <laughs> and then all these components are great parts. Very nice. This is nice detail work again, made by AMT. And then the glass. And then here we have my favorite parts, the chrome. Yep, really nice. A lot of custom bits in there. Of course the Baldwin Motion Team again, back in action. You saw my uh, video on the 69 Corvette Baldwin Motion. Oh, and here's our decal sheet stuck in the bottom of the box and the paper that went with it. So, a lot of neat stuff. Now what I'll do is I'll clear all the box out of the way and I'll open up those bags and everything and show you what's in the box. And here we have our instructions for our 70 and a half Baldwin Motion Camaro. And as you can see we got a nice picture of the Camaro and then we get this nice panel here that says read this before you begin. Carefully study and understand the entire instruction sheet. Compare the parts in the box to the instruction sheet to be sure you have received all the parts that you will need. As you proceed, test fit the parts to ensure proper location and alignment before cementing. Use only cements which are specifically formulated for styrene. Use cements sparingly or a sloppy job may result. Important! Scrape chrome plating and or plating from surfaces where glue will be applied. Yeah, that is important because otherwise your models won't stick together. And then here we get a little description of what the symbols are. So one is assembly sequence, an open number is part number printed on parts bag, and a star is a completed assembly. Read all cautions and warning labels carefully. Register by GM, RC2, and all that stuff. And I do believe this Camaro was actually made by the original AMT crew before they uh, were replaced at RC2. 
So I'm going to zoom out a bit here and then we'll take a look at our actual instructions. So now we start our wheel assembly from the first. So here's our first assembly at the beginning of everything else. And now we begin our wheel assembly. Here we have the front wheel, which is plated, which I do believe is a Krager mag. Then we get the Firestone wide oval tires with the indentation, the wheel retainer, and then the inner front wheel, which is steel. And then for our rear wheels, of course, outer rear wheel, which is deeper, Mickey Thompson tires, wheel retainer, and a inner rear wheel. Next up is our engine assembly, sub-assembly, and here we can see this great big 454 cubic inch Chevy super motor. May even be bigger. If you guys are more familiar with the Baldwin Motion stuff and how they bored them out and what their sizes were, let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, we have a left and right hand side engine block with the transmission molded in place. We get the nice cylinder heads with the rockers inside for our valves. The coil and intake manifold. And of course we got our call out. So this is aluminum. Chevy engine red for your cylinders and engine block. Transmission is aluminum. And your cylinder head there. The water pump and timing cover. Chevy engine orange. Your oil fill, oil filler, filter, pardon me, an oil pan going on here. And our starter motor. And once these are all assembled, then of course you get the sub-assembly for your engine. Now we get to see the final assembly next. Here's our final assembly for this big engine. Here we get the special Baldwin Motion style air cleaner and the bottom for the air cleaner. Our distributor going in here, flat white, and the cap is gloss black. Two-piece carburetor, our special finned valve covers, which are chromed. And there's our alternator and our fan belt and pulley assembly with the fan and the clutch going on there. So once all that is done, you have your final motor. And next up, we have our chassis assembly. And here is sub-assembly A. So you actually get a subframe with this Camaro, which is a really nice touch. This, of course, would be sort of a unibody almost style. Then uh, you get your runners going on here. So then there's our subframe, our engine pops into the subframe with these two-piece exhaust manifolds going on left and right sides and then the whole subassembly will glue onto our floor pan sitting right here. Now here we have an interesting thing because this is step number six but they call it subassembly C which is rather strange that this isn't subassembly B being step number six but at any rate we have our lower X member here with the lower A arms We've got our spindles going in there and our coil springs. And this kit also comes with a steering box, which is a nice extra detail. Um, then our upper A arms, left and right. So all that would go together to give us our subassembly C. And now moving into step seven, which is subassembly B. <laughs> like I say, it doesn't quite make sense why they did that there, but here we get our Baldwin Motion updated Camaro rear suspension, the leaf springs, and then these traction bars which you paint yellow which glue on there to tighten up your your uh, rear springs in cornering situations. The rear end cover going on to the rear axle. Electric fuel pump back here which is uh, quite unique. The drive shaft, the shock absorbers going into the back, and then we have these nice side pipes which will attach to our headers here at the front of subassembly C, or step number six. And now we get into subassembly D, step number eight. And this is a beautiful thing because they give you the full separate molded interior, which when they do that with these sort of things, instead of just getting a blob for a window winder crank, you actually get one that looks like the authentic GM window winder crank, which is a beautiful thing. Beautiful, most beautiful indeed. So there's our inner side panel. And then we get a separate rear seat going in here, the front bucket cushions and the seat backs for the buckets, center console with a shifter, a nice steering wheel which is plated, a steering column and an instrument panel. So what you do here is, of course, the ring for the steering wheel shouldn't be plated, unless of course this is some weird custom, but you paint the edge of the ring and leave the spokes in there as chrome.
When turning the instruction sheet over, we get our final chassis assembly, step number nine. And here we will be putting our wheels onto those axle pins. Remember to carefully put just a little tiny drop of glue inside and try not to get it around where the wheel will be bearing on that inner pin. The upper radiator hose and the lower radio hose will attach to our engines. Engine, pardon me. And the radiator wall and fan shroud will glue in here. And you paint that semi-gloss black and flat black for your hoses. And here we have the chassis body assembly for step 10. Here we have a front air dam which glues underneath the front valance plate. So this would stick out ahead of the car underneath. We've got our, ho our horn and latch, hood latch and horns going onto the front of the radiator support. And then, as you can see, the car is upside down here. Um, this is a chassis and interior assembly. So if we just move this panel down, you can see what happens next. Our firewall glues in. There's our inner fenders, which they suggest painting flat black, I do believe. Our grill pops in from behind. And then we've got our back glass popping in on a front windshield. The rear body panel and left and right taillights popping in. And then a rear spoiler, which glues up underneath on the body, actually. Now once your model is together at that stage, step 10, it's time for the body assembly in step 11. Here we have our engine compartment getting put together. So left and right hand side on our power brake booster. And there's some decals that are going to go in here under the hood. Baldwin Motion ones and everything else. There's an ignition module. It's aluminum. Plugs in here. Oh, yeah. Down here on the valve cover, it looks like. Don't know if that's quite right, but anyway. Uh, fuel cool can going together. And a fuel line and everything popping in to the side of the carburetor. And the battery goes in here on the firewall. Sorry, I made a little goof there. The battery doesn't go on the firewall, it goes on the radiator support. Anyway, so here is our hood going into the body. The side mirrors left and right. An SS decal, which you can put on there. And then our front bumperettes, which will go there and there, not across the grill. There is a version of this car, or at least a 70 Camaro, where the grill or the bumper goes across the grill. And I do believe a round two is releasing that one or has released it or something in there. It's been a little while since I looked at the round two website, to be honest. So here we've got our headlight lenses popping in, as well as our parking light lenses going beside them. And then our license plate bracket will pop in underneath these headlights. Oh, wait, sorry. No, it looks like there's a spot for it here on the front right-hand fender. Anyway, that's our Camaro going together there in the front end. And our final panel will show the back end. And here is step 13, Monster Hobbies number, with the rear end. So here there's some decals that go on. Uh, it says both sides, decal number 8. Decal number 6 is going here on the window. So I guess these are window decals. Decal 7, the SS Camaro one going back here. 454, ah, I was right, found out at the end. It goes in there. The rear bumper and the license plate bracket and the decal all going together here at the back. Now the reason I said I wasn't too sure is because it could be a 454 Camaro for Baldwin Motion, or Baldwin Motion could have bored out the motor to some crazy number like 500 cubic inch or 506 or something weird. But anyway, this is basically our instructions. So we'll just fold these up and then go back to this. And then we'll actually now look at the plastic gray parts. And here we are with our Baldwin Motion 7.5 Camaro body. And as you can see, this is quite nice, up to the nice detail specs of the original AMT team that worked back in the 90s. And you can see the nice detail in here. The grills are all accurate and in the right spots. The fender skirts are there. Sometimes, you know, when I say these, this stuff is perfectly accurate, I get comments in the comment section below saying, yeah, they goofed up on that kid's body or something. So I got to be careful saying that, I think, from here on out. But anyway, there's our side view of the Camaro. It does look accurate to this model. Our side marker lights are door handles that lifted up, kind of flipper style. There's a little spot for our mirror. There's not too much in the way of script on here. So that's where all those decals come in. There's another side marker light, 
yeah, turning it up here, you can see the nice front end. This is pretty typical of the early 70s GMs. My dad had a 74 Buick Century that had this type of arrangement. So, sort of universal to GM at the time. And there's our body. Th this body shape was unique to the 70s Camaros, for sure. There's our back end here with the Camaro script on the hood. Or, sorry, the trunk lid. Boy, it's not my day for identifications. <laughs> And then there we've got the two little holes for that rear spoiler that goes on. Underneath, again, another hallmark of the 90s AMT crew. We have the actual accurate padded rooftop with the dome light and our sun visors. There are a couple little mold marks, which again, remove with your number 16 hobby blade. Oh, it's even got the upper seat belts like on my 72 Cutlass up there. They were mounted up on the roof, and if you wanted the shoulder belts in the front, you would just pull these down and click them into a little latch on the uh, seat belt. So that's our look at our Camaro body. Now let's see what else is in the bags. And here's the undercarriage of our Camaro. These Camaros were known as F bodies back in the day. F for fast. No, I don't know if that's true, but anyway, <laughs> they were F bodies. And here you can see we got a nice carpet detail. There are some mold marks there at the front of our floor pans. There's where our seats would go, which cover up some more mold marks, and the back bench seat would go in there. The console would go into those two little holes. And then just turning this over, you of course get your fuel tank here, all the little holes for shock absorbers and springs and other details, and all this nice detail here. There's the second half of our frame going in. So this is essentially a unibody. There's the frame rails off to the sides. And then our uh, transmission tunnel and the spot for, of course, our transmission. I had a bit of trouble trying to remember what I was saying there. So again, nice detail and a real hallmark of the last group of AMT workers before RC2 bought it out. Next up, I'll review two separate parts trees here, but they are kind of connected. We have body panels and some of the frame, the front frame pieces, front suspension pieces, I guess, frame and suspension pieces. Take your pick. Here they are. <laughs> okay. But as you can see, we've got our nice Baldwin motion, um, sort of a ram tunnel type hood scoop. I'm not really sure what you'd call this type of hood scoop, but it's pretty much... A Baldwin motion trademark the way it is and of course we got our hood pins on the Camaro hood turning it underneath you can see the bracing for the hood there is no matting in here but there are mold marks underneath again number 16 hobby blade there's our center console you can see some really nice detail on there so I guess that's about it as far as I can bring the camera up to the focus plane there's our underneath here for cross members and different uh, bars here and whatnot. It's been a while since I made these videos. I think I'm losing my touch. <laughs> okay, and there's our front suspension. Of course, I can't really make all these videos one after the other, after the other, after the other, because again, time, circumstances, plus it gets kind of repetitive trying to do the same thing so many times in a row. Anyway, enough excuses. <laughs> I digress, as the Americans say. So there's our spoiler in the back, and you can see it's notched in there for, whoops, our trunk lid. There you go. So it looks like the proper opening one and not just a big solid bar across the back. There's our front panel and that little valence piece that goes and glues under here. Paint it flat black, I guess. There's our back end with the tail lights and everything going in, and our front little subframe. And again, the detail is very nice on here. It looks pretty accurate. And again, the AMT kits of this time, they were competing with, competing with Tamiya Japan, and I believe they came out really well. Next up, we have another two panels. These are our interior panels with the seats in this section. And then down in here are engine components and suspension components as well. So let's bring these up to the camera. I'll just move this one down. Start up here first. Again, you can see the nice pleats in the seats. Sort of that tuck and roll style again. And then underneath we have some ribs in here. That's to give the plastic a little extra strength from AMT. Nice touch. 
There's the back of our door panels. There are mold marks in here, but they will be hidden up along inside the body. But turning these panels over, you can see all that nice detail. This, of course, is the high level you'll get when you're, of course, uh, got this in the mold and it's nice and flat like this. See the, more of the accurate window cranks and then the latches to get you in and out of the car. The only thing missing are the little buttons for your door locks, but that's okay. Now I'll just move that out of the way and bring this one back up. Here you can see our bucket seats again with matching tuck and roll pleated pattern. The back of the buckets. And the only thing missing out of here is a little lever that pops up on the side for adjusting your seat forward and back when you're sitting in the real car. Again, those are high level details. I'm not sure if everyone wants to put them in their models or not. There's all those hoses and different bits. There's our little braces on those rear uh, springs, our wheel backs, the kingpins, the springs, and the upper A-arms for front suspension. And then those are those retaining clips, or whatever you want to call them, for our wheels. And remember to be careful not to get glue on any of these surfaces out here, or else you'll lock your wheels together into the thing and they won't be able to freely rotate into your axle. <laughs> okay, so there's those components there. Our final two parts trees contain the entire engine assembly as well as our radiator wall here, radiator and radiator support. Our firewall, um, there's our dashboard here, and then the components for under the hood, and then this parts tree has the rest of our suspension and side mirrors in here as well, steering column, whatnot. So let's just move this little one out of the way and look at the great big picture. So here you can see all those nice rocker details for our valves, the engine, look at that intake manifold there, nicely done. The carburetor, two halves to it. There's our firewall with all the correct wires and different heater bits, windshield wiper motor. There is the dashboard, look at the gauges on there, lots of neat stuff to paint. It's got all five pedals. Sorry, four pedals. <laughs> Woo. All right, so you got your parking brake, your clutch in your brake, and your gas pedal. So all that nice stuff. A high level of detail on there. It's even got the cylinder holes in. So you could actually have this sitting on a bench with the motor being worked on. Or the motor is... Motor components are on the bench, but you know what I'm saying. Use the, that new garage set that came out from RC2. Or, sorry, round two. Wow, I'm not having a good night. <laughs> okay, so there's our rear leaf springs, the um, drive shaft, our side mirrors, steering column, nice detail on the differential cover, the license plates, shock absorbers, and the differential itself. So again, a little bit of mold marks and stuff on the back, but easily taken care of. The, these are alignment pins, don't remove those you know, all the rest. But again, very nicely done. And so that finishes our gray parts for this review. Now let's look at my favorite parts, the chrome. And now we have my favorite part of all the model kits, and that of course is the chrome parts tree. So here we have these nice Krager mag wheels sitting here, and our side pipes, and then the pipes from the manifold, which are chrome, that's great. I thought they might've been gray plastic. There's our 454 valve covers, the steering wheel, the grill, and of course using a little bit of Citadel Games Workshop Nuln Oil in here will bring out the... Uh, actually, the Nuln Oil will sink into the back of this grill, but leave you the nice chrome on the front if you wipe it off the front there. You can also do the same with Tester's Flat Black Thin Down if you want to go old school. There's our gear shifter there, and here we have the... Um, air cleaner, rear bumper and front bumpers. Let's just turn this over and look at the air cleaner detail. It's like a beehive. <laughs> Honeycomb kind of thing. But really cool looking. Our grill has some brackets behind here just to strengthen it so it doesn't uh, squish on you or go flat or something. Crack. Anyway, nice Camaro script in here. 454 I do believe. And our nice grill. So very good chrome work. Look at these valve covers. You've got nice detail in there, even a nameplate. There's our steering wheel with the holes. Remember, you could buy these steering wheels at Canadian Tire and pull the ones off like your cutlass or whatever and stick on your sport steering wheel. Anyway, 
there's all our chrome. Next up we have our clear components and AMT was kind enough to double bag our glass here so our windshields wouldn't get scratched and whatnot, which was always a bane of earlier kits. You buy a model, you pay so much, you open it up, the glass is sitting there raw open on near gray or white plastic components and there's scratches like right up there so you have to <laughs> try to polish them out and hope they didn't get scratched too deep, hope no one will notice. If you do use a polishing kit, you just scratch the glass anyway, you know, and all the rest. But being double bagged in here means that this is perfectly crystal and very well protected. So we've got a front windshield. We'll have to clip these little bits off with side cutters. Maybe sandpaper a little bit just to smooth it out. There's our turn signals and our front headlights and our rear tail lamps as well. So very nice detail on this. We'll just move it up. Whoops. Let's see, focal plane. Our headlights do have a little bit of that mesh in there. You can, I don't know if you can pick that up. But remember it runs north and south, not at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> so always remember that when you're putting in these headlights. Otherwise you'll have that crooked. Here's our tail lamps. And it does have the nice sunken detail with the little caps on the back. So you'll need to look at real Camaro tail lights to know how to paint them. I do believe, now I might be wrong on this, that it's chrome around the edge and then that little thing dot in the middle is also chrome. But again, nicely executed parts for our Camaro. And here we have our tires that come with the kit. And these are really nice because they actually give you four sets of stock tires, even though you're only going to be using two. And they give you these Mickey Thompson SS Indy Profile rear tires, which are really awesome. Now, for those of you that remember my earlier videos, these Firestone wide oval tires that come with this kit originally debuted in the 1992 release, I do believe it was, of the Ford Fairlane. So these tires are really nice because they have this indentation in here. So if you want them to be white walls, real thin white walls, or red line tires, which are popular back in the day, you can easily paint in here and then wipe it off with your rag on the top and it'll leave you with the paint in that indentation. So really cool stuff. The tread is nice on here. And my lights, I don't know if my lights are picking this up as nicely as they usually do. Anyway, so there you go, you get four of them, so you could use the other two on a different model if you want. Get two of these Camaros and you got four for another car. And then these nice Mickey Thompson ones, they actually have Mickey Thompson lettering on them. Well, the Firestone ones did too. But look at the tread profile on here, it's all nice and tight, close together. Really cool stuff. So again, nice tires by round two. And that brings us to our decal sheet. And here we have three license plates from New York. One that says Motion, one that says Phase 3, and the final one says Gotcha. And these are personalized license plates with the frame around them. So you could actually use these on different cars as well. The Motion one you could use on other Baldwin Motion model kits, of course. Phase 3 is sort of a universal thing. Could also be for the Baldwin Motion. But Gotcha definitely could fit on any car and look good anywhere. There's the SS script and the 454. These are just black shadow outlines. There's a couple of the under the hood de decals and the ones that would go on the glass. A couple of little Baldwin motion ones. Very tiny, actually. And then your SS, which would go on your front fenders. And it's really hard for me to make out what some of these other little teeny tiny things are. But they are all listed in our instruction sheet. Now one thing that is missing off that decal sheet, as you would have noted, are these white stripes that are on the Baldwin Motion Camaro, which really set aside and make this car stand out. Now, the sad part with RC Ertl, or RC2, is that they would often make a box and show you something on the box art, and when you open the kit, it was sadly missing. Now, I'm not sure if Round 2, the new AMT, has this stripe on their current releases of this kit, or if it's not included. But at any rate, you'll either have to try to find a way to paint this on by hand or mask it with masking tape and use a rattle can or uh, find somebody online that does make the decals for this. 
And if you can find one of these guys that does this, please leave that link down below in our comments. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1970 and a half Baldwin Motion Camaro. And if you've built this model kit before, I want to see your pictures of it over on our Facebook page. And I'll leave the link to that below in the description. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this great review of the 1970 and a half AMT Baldwin Motion Camaro. And don't forget to check out all our latest model kits that are now available at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to see it. And until next time, Camaro fans, happy model building.